Hello, I am going to take you guys along with me on a interview shoot that I'm doing. And I'm the sole videographer and photographer for a healthcare organization here in Florida. Today, I'm actually doing some interviews um, for one of the community programs that we have uh, that has you know kids playing basketball in wheelchairs and stuff like that. And we're gonna talk to some of the parents. Just wanted to show you guys some of the gear that we have, the composition that I choose, and how the composition helps um, fit in with the story of what is being talked about and on camera. I don't, I like to use depth. I don't like to use just plain backgrounds and stuff like that. I'm going to hopefully be able to show you a little bit of uh, the questions that I'm asking the people to evoke the correct emotion and the right, the kind of answers I'm looking for to be able to piece this story together. Interviewing is not just setting up gear and all that. It's, it's actually getting that story. That story matters more than anything else. I'll show you the audio gear that I'm using, camera, lighting, all that stuff. I have to shoot very portably. Like I, I, I'm a kind of essentially a running gun filmmaker, really, uh, because I have to I have to fit in tight spaces sometimes. Rarely do I have the chance to set up a large production with a bunch of equipment, like I would love to be able to do. But I have to fit in tight spaces sometimes, and I have to be light and portable. So I'll, I'll kind of hopefully talk about some of that as to why I chose some of the gear that I have. But hopefully this is beneficial to you. If you maybe have been doing interviews, maybe you'll learn something. Maybe you'll see something that I suck at and you'll help me get better. Uh, leave that in the comments. Running a, a videography business is kind of the same. I, I work for a healthcare organization, but I also do this stuff on the side. So um, it kind of all works together. And um, I hope this interview process is beneficial to you. So let's get right into it. Since I'm not used to making these kind of videos with the cameras on myself, I'm not used to putting my camera in ISO auto and hoping that the microphone level is correct. So I'm loading up my truck. Um, I think I'm gonna go over the gear once we get there. Maybe I'll just kind of throw it in here as we go. So for transport, I use the Rock and Roller Multicart R16. It's very sturdy. I actually own the R12, that's the one I have for work. And um, it's very sturdy and it can you can lengthen it short, long, Put one side down and use it as a dolly. A million things. If you don't know what the rock and roller card is, you're missing out. It's worth every dime that I've spent on it. I think, you know, it's like 200, 300 bucks or something like that. It doesn't matter. You're looking for a card. You're going in and out of weddings. You're going in and out of interviews. I've had that thing fully loaded out, fully extended, and um, it works perfect for me. You can depend on it. It's, you don't have to worry about going up and down hills. You don't have to worry necessarily about what terrain you're going over. Obviously, you don't want to push it through sand. So really quick, the gear that I'm bringing with me, I have a Canon C200. Most of the stuff I shoot is on the Sony a7 III. I like using the C200 for certain things like interviews. Um, you know, I can just kind of let it keep rolling and I don't have to worry about it. Um, I love, you know, the color science of the Canons and everything. Not that the Sonys aren't good because I think the Canons or Sony color science is fantastic. However, um, I just really like using the, the C200 because it's a dedicated video camera. Um, I've got built-in ND filters. If I need them, it's just a fantastic camera. And I, I've struggled a little bit with multicam stuff using the, the Sony a7 III mixed with the C200, but once you kind of figure it out, it's not so bad. In my audio bag, I have the Canon 24 to 70, um, even though I just said audio bag, but that's carrying, I'm carrying a bunch of stuff in here. Um, I have a Rokinon 50 millimeter, uh, it's a T1.5, so this is some of their, their cheaper cinema lenses. Um, I like using that. It's not, it's not autofocus, so I might not use it, but I really like getting that shallow depth of field sometimes whenever I can. For audio, I have the Rode. This is the Rode NTG3B, fantastic mic. Everyone freaks out about audio tests and all these shotgun mics and everything like that. Just get a good one. Just just buy a good one. It doesn't matter. I mean, I, unless you're being really particular, but most of these these kind of shotgun mics, they sound so good. So don't 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 worry about it. Uh, the NTG5 is great. I, I just came out. Get that. You'll be fine. Zoom H5. Probably won't need this. I'm probably going to go XLR directly into the C200, but I always bring it just in case. Some monitoring headphones. I have a set of uh, Sennheiser. G3s just in case, but I'm probably not going to use those. Whenever you're doing some stuff that's really, really big, um, I recommend doing boom and and um, laving people. But I'm going to be standing right there monitoring the audio. On the C200, you can actually record on channel one and then have a backup track on on channel two at a lower volume. Good as a safety track. So I'll probably do that. Bringing my Benro tripod for this camera so that you guys can see what I'm doing. 
I'll show you the lights in a little bit, but I'm, I'm bringing, I have a Nova Pro 2 and EOS. One is their big boy light, the other one is a little bit smaller. Still, they're all super powerful. If you don't know about Roto Light, you should, because Roto Light is amazing. They're light, they're portable, they're battery powered, no wires. They last a long time. I use them for photography and videography. So you definitely should look into Roto Lights. They're worth every penny. I have, a, I have a Tacoma and I, everything, I just kind of shove it back here. I can fit a ton if I'm really trying to be organized, but I'm just fitting all my stuff back here. Of course, it's not gonna fit there with the mic on it. Let's go right over there and get set up. It's been interesting balancing working on the side as a videographer and photographer and doing it for my nine to five and you know, a lot of people want to make their side job. Their so I'm just going to keep this part short. I'm going to cut the, most of this part out here to, in the interest of the uh, length of the whole video so that we can get right back into the interviews. But essentially what I was trying to say here was I have a nine to five job. I, I am a photographer, videographer at my nine to five and I do the same thing on the side. That's a little bit rare. Not everyone's in that situation, but People ask me if, I have, am, if I'm ever gonna go and do that stuff on the side as my own business and leave the nine to five. And my point is, is I really enjoy working on the team that I work on and I would, wouldn't really wanna just be working by myself at home, shoot, edit, shoot, edit, and not really interacting with people. And, um, and then the second point would be um, to figure out what you wanna shoot. I shot a lot of weddings and I've, I, while I still like shooting weddings, I think that um, I definitely like working with corporate clients more and, and doing some other kind of work. So um, it's important to shoot everything and then eventually you'll figure out that what the things that you don't want to do and the things that you do want to do so that you can kind of focus your time and um, you know make sure that your time is used wisely because you're never going to get your time back so you don't want to waste it on, on doing things that you don't want to do and uh, having my nine to five allows me to be more picky about the things I do on my side job so um, that is a nice plus also for having a nine to five. It just depends on what situation you're in and how much you like your nine to five, whether you want to jump out and start your own side job doing photography and videography. All right, laugh mic is on so I don't have to yell or look at that. A lot of this video, I'm probably not gonna be looking directly into the camera because I don't wanna be a weirdo in here while I'm setting everything up and constantly looking over. So if I do that, just don't be offended and uh, just know I know you're there and care about you. For this roller cart, you can also get, it's called this grip and, graf, grip and gaff bag and it goes on, it slips right on, I'll show you in a minute. And it allows you to carry things like light stands and booms and whatever else. I didn't put an ND filter on this camera because how do the vloggers do that? I guess they just crank the shutter like I just did because I'm not gonna be dealing with an ND filter on a camera that I am not behind of. I'm not behind the camera. I can't be, I can't, I don't even know if my exposure's right. I have it on auto ISO. Hey, how are you? Good. A lot of this video, I'm not gonna compose myself very well. So I, I'm obviously like my head's probably cut off right now. I'm getting this tripod set up to put you guys on. All right. Yeah, audio looks good. Hoping it's coming out nice and crispy. Some of the first stuff that I do whenever I come to do a shoot, this is a little, normally I'd get it here a lot earlier, but I know these guys and I kind of know, this is not like a set shoot starts at this time, all that kind of thing. It's gonna be kind of as things go. I try to get wherever I'm going to be, you know, at least an hour early. I, I tell whoever it is that, that I need to be there an hour early to set up. That way I can get set up, figure out my composition, feel comfortable with everything. So whenever I first get somewhere, I try to get all the things that need to go on something done first. So I'm going to get my light stands set up because the lights have to go on the light stands. So let's at least just, they don't have to be in their spot, but let's go ahead and get them set up. This is a Manfrotto booming, um, booming light stand. So if you see, I can do this. I'm not gonna use it today as a boom mic, but I can go like this and then bam, I can boom this out and this extends out further. 
today it's just going to be a good light. It's a, it's a they're really solid light stands. It's nice to have variability in what you need. This is just a really nice wide-legged uh, light stand. I wouldn't have bought it personally. Someone else bought it, but it works. Whenever you're buying light stands, don't get the cheap stuff. Get good stuff. It's not worth it whenever you're putting, I'm about to put like a $1,700 and $1,000 light on these light stands. It's not worth it to, to, to get cheap stuff. My, one of my favorite light stands is either this Manfrotto booming light, uh, light stand or there's a company called Strobe Pro and they have one that's very similar. I think it's a little cheaper. They're a Canadian company. Uh, gets, you know, I went a long time without C-stands. I really like being able to talk to you guys without having to be so close to the thing. You don't need necessarily a light stand. Whenever you get to a certain point, you do. You don't always need a light stand or a C-stand, but you're gonna get to a point where you need some heavy, you know, something that can hold heavy. And I just realized I forgot sandbags, so that's not good, but I'm going to figure out, thankfully nothing I'm doing is gonna be that heavy. I'm gonna be booming a mic, a boom pole, on this C-stand. That's the only purpose of this C-stand today. These little guys, I don't even know what to call it, but you can see this is for, I'll put one on the screen if I need to. With your C-stands always, even though this is a light thing, whatever, wherever the weight's gonna go, so my weight's gonna go, you know, this way I'll turn this thing, that's where your lead leg goes. The lead leg's the tallest, longest leg. That's typically the one you put uh, a uh, sandbag on. These, these can get expensive too. These can be a few hundred bucks. Uh, this, this is a KTEC Avalon KEG 100cc. And it's carbon fiber, it's very light. And it has an XLR port in the back here. I have the male and then the female here, which is what goes into your mic. And that way you don't have to run a cable. The length of this thing has the cable built in. It makes your life a lot easier. Less cables around. And I'll usually just get this kind of in a good spot. That way, when it comes, to, when I'm gonna put the mic on it. Go ahead and put my tripod on. This is a Sackler Ace tripod. It's carbon fiber, triple braced on each leg. Does the job. It's not a, I wouldn't call it a heavy duty tripod, but it does the job for most things. If you need a tripod that's gonna get super, super tall, this is not your tripod. Uh, researching tripods is a, uh, I feel like it's a pastime of mine. To find the right ones, you can go with the Manfrotto's, but Manfrotto can get expensive. I went with the uh, Benros personally. It also, the one that you guys are stating on right now, it does not get super tall either. They have those if you need those, but sometimes you need a super tall tripod, that way you can see over crowds and whatnot. We have one of those, this is an interview situation. So I don't need to worry about that. Okay, so I got my tripod up, let's get it set up and ready. And again, the more you do these things, the more reps you put in, the easier these things will get, the faster you'll be to set up. Because sometimes in my situation, I have a very limited amount of time to get in a specific space to set up and shoot. So I, I, get the, I go ahead and get the tripod somewhere in a general area where I think it's gonna go. Um, I think I'm trying to get the kids to be playing basketball in the background while I'm doing these interviews. So I think, so I think I'm gonna have the tripod aiming this way because I want the kids to be in the background over there while I'm interviewing whoever it is I'm talking to here. So obviously this is gonna to be too tall. I don't know why I'm, I did that. Now this one, the one thing I don't like about this tripod is it doesn't have a, 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 the head that can go up and down like the one you guys are on can. So you gotta move all the legs in order to change that. I'm just gonna put it right there. That should be a decent height. I like to be either eye level or just slightly above eye level for interviews. So now I've got my stuff. Make sure before you put a $7,000 camera on a tripod, that you have everything locked down. Preferably put even like a sandbag underneath. Make sure it's all locked down. I typically get rid of this handle, you know, put it down to the side. I don't need that thing. I'm not gonna be panning and tilting or whatever. I like to shoot um, with shadow side, camera shadow side of the face. So that means I'm gonna put my lights accordingly. So if I want the shadow side to be on this side and they're gonna look at me sitting here, then I need to put the light over here. And then this light, I will, what I'll, I'll put that on the opposite side over there so it'll, it'll be a rim light to kind of separate them from the background a little bit. I'll put that over there in a minute. All right, so let's talk about roto lights. Um, so as we all know, I, I have an Aperture Light Dome 120D and I love it. Um, I think everyone loves their Aperture Lights, who doesn't? But when it comes to being light and portable, you know, you can, you can do V-mounts with them and that's great. Roto lights just hit 
the ball, hit, hit it out of the park. This is the Innova Pro 2. This is their most expensive. They have a more expensive high-end high professional light. It's called the Titan, I believe, but we don't have to worry about that one. This is the Innova Pro 2. Um, this has a ton of light. Um, you can hit it into a diffusion source. But today, I'm just gonna use it straight on like this. Actually, I have some diffusion here that I'm gonna put on it. You can, it just has, it's kind of, think of like gels. I'm just gonna use one layer here. And while I'm setting this up here, I've been using rotor lights for a couple years now, and um, I have them personally, and I have, I started out with the Neo 2, which is their smallest one. Um, it's still very powerful and versatile. The reason I love rotor lights is I do photography and videography. And I love the, the circular light that these give you. Circular replicates the sun. Sun replicates what our eyes are used to seeing, so it looks like a nice, soft light. Um, you fully color adjustable. They have a white only version, daylight only version. This is the one I can completely change the color temperature, brightness. Um, I'm gonna put a V-mount battery on here. Runs off a of battery for, for a long, long time. And um, I'm portable. Look, no cables, no wires. I stepped right on the diffusion. That was great. All right, this is the AOS. The AOS is their smaller, it's, a st it's, the, it's right underneath the Innova Pro. And so the Innova Pro, this thing, is, this thing has handles on it like this. I've had people hold the light for me while I'm doing photography. That's the other thing with the, with the Roto lights is it has a, a um, receiver built in, an Elichrome, Elenchrome receiver, and I have the trigger that I just put on my camera, and it triggers and it doubles the output for flash. So if you need flash, a lot of time, most of the time I try and stay constant light because these lights are just so beautiful, but sometimes you need that extra power and these give it, give it to me. So this is gonna be my rim light. It's better for rim lights to be a little more of a directional kind of hot light, but I'm gonna just do this one the way that it is and uh, get it close enough and we'll be fine. Take your V-mount batteries. I was very confused about V-mount batteries for a long, long time. And just to, I've given up on how long this video is going to be. I'm going to let it be however long it is. This is a this is a 95 watt hour, 14.8 volt. Um, this is pretty standard. 95 the watt hour is how long it'll last. So uh, at home I have a I think it's like 160 watt hour or something like that. Um, the 14.8 volt. The watt hour is how long. It's how much juice is inside. Both of these are 95. It'll be perfectly fine for this. You can plug these roto lights in if you need to, but I don't need to for most things. And I usually have an extra. I have two of these, the AOSs, and then one Innova Pro 2, and I have one Neo. Didn't need the Neo today. I'm not gonna put the windscreen on the road mic because you only need that if there's any wind. I'm in a gymnasium, we don't need any of that. All right, so I have this uh, mic holder here. I'm gonna screw it on to the boom pole. And this boom pole is good if you, ha if you have someone that can run boom for you, that's great. But again, most of the time I'm shooting, I'm shooting solo. So, come on you jerk. So I have to think about shooting solo and everything that I do. I love the quality of this mic. Man, whenever you, whenever you go from just using like road mics and stuff like that, or uh, like video mic pros, to using a good quality boom mic, um, again, I recommend the NTG5 if you're in the market right now, or the S Mic 3 from Deity. I have the Deity V-Mic D3 Pro, which is a fantastic on-camera or boom mic, but this is a dedicated, and I'll actually put this on the C200. The reason, here's the reasoning that I chose this mic for this set. These lab mics, like I'm what I'm wearing right now, are typically somewhat of an omnidirectional mic. So that means it's kind of picking up my audio ever. I could turn this mic upside down to the side, whatever. You can look up what kind of capsule you're, you have on your mic. It picks up a lot of audio. This is a very directional mic. So whenever it's being talked here, that's what you're hearing. Everything around it starts getting rejected. So I want to reject the bouncing basketballs, the screaming, whatever happens. That way we can focus on the interview and I'm gonna focus on getting good audio. You get the mic as close to the mouth as you can while not being in frame, we'll be good. And then you just take your XLR that I did not wrap very well last time. And you just run that into the butt of the thing you know, it's, you might ask, why don't you use the zoom? Less steps in editing. Um, syncing audio to video is very easy, but it's another step. And if I can just import it directly in, why not? I, if, I, if this was like a really high level 
not to say this is not important, but I'm, I trust that I'm going to be okay. I would be doing lav either into the zoom and then the boom into the camera, or I would be doing the boom directly into the camera or into the zoom. Either, it, either way, I, I use the zoom typically as backup audio if I can. I like to go right into camera when possible. If you have a really good balanced XLR cables, just go in camera, especially if you have a C200, why not? So I'm gonna run this over here. And now I can, I got my light set up, I got my audio. Typically I do the camera last, because that's the most to move around if I had to. I'm gonna go ahead and get my monitors, headphones. You don't need a great pair of headphones for monitoring. A lot of us got, like to use the same ones we edit with. That way, I don't know, you have a decent pair. I like the ones that go directly into my ears because a lot of times I'm not able to wear a hat when I'm shooting and I don't like it mushing my head down, my hair down. I don't have the C200B, I have the regular C200 that comes with all the pieces. I just don't understand having a cinema camera that only does 8-bit, especially this only came out a couple years ago. It is what it is. Canon needs the, I guess that's why they have the other lines to make you spend more money. I, whenever I inherited this, this camera, I spent so many hours, so many hours researching and make, I'm just making sure my audio is still recording and um, learning this camera on YouTube, just like you guys are hopefully doing right now. You know, I got myself extremely familiar with the, with the menu system and all that. And again, like for this shoot right now, I don't need to be using this camera necessarily, but I like to keep myself familiar with, the, with, my, with my stuff. That way, whenever I do need it on like maybe a short notice, I'm able to very quickly grab and go, set it up, I know where all my menus are. If something goes wrong, I know how to, I know how to rectify very quickly. You don't want to look like a moron while you're using your camera. It's up to us to make sure we stay informed and not get complacent with our equipment or what we're doing. C200 is set up um, as far as all the accessories that go on it. Now, decision time. 50 mil or 24 to 70. I think I'm, if I was in a different environment and I was maybe dealing with some professional um, people that were more, were more professionals, I would probably go with the 50 because it's not autofocus. It does look really good. But since these people might be sitting there, they're just parents to these kids and whatnot. They're going to be moving around and stuff like that. I, um, I, I, I love the autofocus for the face autofocus on these. So I'm going to set the C200 to be face only autofocus. And then no matter where if they move in and they move out, where, if they kind of move that plane, is, shooting at 1.5 is not possible for most people, most things. I love that buttery background, but um, we're just going to go with the 24 to 70 so that I have that autofocus and I can trust it. Don't drop the lens, don't drop the lens. Make sure it's nice and seated before you let go. There we go. Lens caps all stick together. That way I'm not looking for them later. All right, we got our audio together. We got our camera together. So now, never come on a shoot without gaff tape because what I like to do is, I don't like to just plug these things in and just let it dangle. So. What I'm gonna do is, since I'm not gonna be hand-holding this, I'm gonna run the XLR through the hand grip strap. And there, that way this, if something tugs on it, it's not going to rip it right out. I'm actually gonna do a loop here, I think. There we go, now I got a little, little bit of a knot, a kink there. So if anything happens, it doesn't pull straight out of the camera and, and rip the input. Those are the little things that will save you time, because imagine that happens, I trip over this cord, Got to send the thing into Canon to get it fixed, and now I don't have a camera. I hope to one day be able to get rid of this thing and get the, F the new FX9. That way I have all Sony cameras. I could have my Sony a7 III as B cams, two B cams I have, and then uh, the FX9 is my main cam. But we deal with what we had. So this light is gonna go somewhere here. This light's gonna go behind once they're done setting up. Let me grab one of these. Let's do a range test for this Sony lav setup. I don't think I've done that. I'm just gonna keep talking to see if I'm still picking up the audio. And can you hear me? I'm all the way over here, I'm coming back, coming back, coming back. I was on a golf course using this one time and it started cutting out a little bit, but you never know if that's frequency or is it range. What I look for in a chair for interviews 
is one that has a low back because I don't like the, back, the big back of the chair being by their shoulders. I want it to be focused on them and not what the chair looks like. All right, so we have, we have our, our boom mic, our C200, which I need to turn on and make sure all my settings are good. I'm gonna shoot in 4K. Um, it's 8-bit and all that, but I just shoot in C-Log 3. And I have a nice LUT, throw it on there, do a little tweaking. You know, usually the LUT's a little too contrasty, take that down. And, you know, I'm just gonna throw everything into this video. So, LUTs are not gonna fix your, your video or your, or your exposure. You have to get your exposure right. So, within the camera, I have, I have it set to where it does like a, a mock LUT so that you can see what it will somewhat look like when you're done. That way you're not looking at a flat picture for a profile while you're shooting. And that'll help you kind of get your exposure somewhat decent for editing. Um, I pretty much always color grade everything no matter how big or small. Rarely do I just shoot something and let it go. And then I'm gonna have them looking at me. I should have grabbed two chairs. I'm gonna put another chair over here and they're gonna look at me. Eye line will be low so that you don't want people looking up or too high or too low because um, that looks weird on camera. Now, what focal length do you think I should set the 24 to 70 to? Not 24. Yes, you can crop in, I'm shooting 4K, but what do you lose if you do that? Some depth of field. So, I'm going to, whenever I position this tripod and everything, I'm gonna be at least 50 to 70. I like to not be too tight, that way I do have some room to crop in and out especially since I'm not doing two cameras on this. Um, normally I like to shoot with two cameras. I've tried to get over about doing YouTube videos. Is, is it good enough? Has it been done before? It doesn't matter, just do it. That's not what YouTube's for. Just shoot. I know you don't want it to be too far away to where it's like they can't hear you talking. So I'm gonna get this light pretty darn close. I'm just gonna set this to 5,000. All right, so that's, I can already see the, the chair lighting up. This light's gonna be great. And then this one, just for their hair light. I'm sure I'll have to adjust it. I should have made sure this was more locked down. Make sure the light comes on. It does. Let's set it to around 5,000. Even though the light in, in this, the, I think they have LEDs in here. I think they have LEDs in here. So if you see, you know, normally gymnasiums are those ugly, I forget what kind of lights you call them, but it gives that green tint to stuff. I think these are just nice white LEDs, which means they're probably at around five to 6,000 Kelvin. I just don't want the background to be really yellowy and then I have white light on the person. Color balance is something that took me a while to figure out. Uh, essentially just kind of set all your gear around the same color balance, like get, get, get all your gear to match what the room is, unless you're going for something specific and then kind of tweak from there. So I just go to 5,000. We'll see what, what skin tone, which is the most important thing. We'll see what that looks like once they sit down. Something I put on recently is RGB parade so I can get color tones right early. Whenever I'm going through the menus on this guy, I'm going to come over here. Usually the first thing I do is format the cards. So let's do that from the main spot. I don't like to start any shoot with, uh, do I have anything else on here? I don't, I don't like to start shoots with uh, cards that have stuff on them, but I think I'm okay. I'm just, I'm, I, I, okay, I do have some stuff on here and I know what all that is and I have it backed up. Yeah, I can initialize, I'll do it. So. If I don't feel 100% confident that I have everything backed up, then I'll usually just leave it on the card. But we're, we'll go ahead and um, initialize these. I, I shoot dual. If you're doing something where it's going to require a long set of shooting, you can do the relay where it fills up one card and goes to the next. And you know, this depends on whatever camera you're using. But all right, so both cards are, are initialized. We're good to go. I again, I'm going to go in the menu. I'm going to check a few things. Um, I pretty much always shoot the same way, so it should be fine, but we want to make sure we are at 23 frames, 23.98 frames per second. I am at 3840 by 2160, 8 bit. That's, uh, so we're shooting at 4K, not 1080. I do that more, mostly so that I, so I can crop in and out of things. And our audio format is on AAC 16 bit 2 channel. Double slot recording on. All right, now in our audio setting, 
we're gonna say for our channel one, two, we're gonna say input terminals. That means the input one that our microphone is gonna be on. Channel two is also gonna be input one because I'm not using a, a second source. And then what that should mean is, and I think I, I need to give phantom power. Yep, I need to give plus 48 to that mic. Boom. Okay, so channel one and two are both recording. You can see they're both recording evenly. I think I'm just gonna leave it that way. You can do it, you can, you can change the settings in here to make it to where channel one is at one level and channel two is at another level. If maybe there's gonna be loud audio at some point, it might clip. We're just gonna leave it that way. We're at 4300 Kelvin right now, let's see. So let's see what we're looking like when we get up to 5000. It's looking a little orange. So we're gonna set I don't like having to take orange out of my color grade, so I'd rather it be a little closer to real. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna let's say let's say we're at 45.50. I'm gonna change my lights to be 45.50, and then the first person that I get to sit here, I'll do that'll they'll be my first test, so I'll have to spend a little more time with them. All right, other settings. Let's go and check our autofocus. And again, I knew that I had time here, but typically I would have done all of this. I would have double checked it before I came. AF mode continuous. I mean, it's constantly staying in focus. Frame position selectable. We're gonna go to face detection. We're gonna turn that on. And we're gonna put it on face only. Face priority means it will do its best to only keep faces in focus. Face only means if, a, if it's not focusing on a face, let's say someone's sitting there and then they move, it will not change focus to the background. It'll just stay on their face. Um, not that that's a big issue for, for this. I just know that whenever they sit in that chair, I'm gonna put, this, put the square on their face and it's gonna stay right on their face. And I don't have to worry if they, if they move in and out of the chair, losing focus plane. We wanna get this guy as close as possible. We're gonna extend that out and then I'm gonna put it as close to their head as possible. So right now, I'm pretty low. So what I'm gonna have to do is dip it down, most likely. Let's start there. Cause I don't know how tall or short people are gonna be. Just keep it up for until they sit down. All right, so if I'm sitting right there, I'm gonna have to, I got it, I got it generally close. I got it close enough. Oh, and then, Go ahead and just make sure that our audio is good. Again, I like to loop, loop around this kind of stuff so that I'm not just hanging wire straight off. And yeah, I'm picking up audio from the mic. So that's good. We'll hang that there. Hey, you're the first victim? Yeah. <laughs> yes. My name's Tracy. Tracy, nice to meet you. Go ahead and have a seat right there. So you're the first one, so I gotta, I'm gonna set up all my stuff around you, okay? If you don't mind, give me a second. All right, so the face came right in there. Great. I'm just gonna adjust this guy. And you'll be looking at me as I sit in that chair. Go ahead and look like right at my hand here. Perfect, okay. All right, get my lights on. There we go, don't look at the light. I, I know it's tempting. Every, every time someone looks right at it and it's like, not a good idea. <laughs> Get this up higher. Fifty-nine percent. See how we're looking there. Get this close. <laughs> All the things I've been needing someone to sit here so I can do. All right. Yeah, and make sure you're feeling comfortable where you're sitting there. All right. Let's see how we look. That looks like a pretty well-exposed shot me. Of course, this, the lens the, or the uh, monitors on this. All right, I'm going to do an audio check. Tell me what you had for breakfast. Uh, I had some scrambled eggs and yogurt. Scrambled eggs and yogurt? The American <laughs> breakfast, yeah. Uh, you'd be surprised how many people say they did not have breakfast. All right, I'm going to start recording. And if you could just say, uh, say your name for me. Can you spell it for me? All right, and then who, who's, uh, who's your child that's playing? I think he's right there, yeah. <laughs> All right. And I'm not going to worry too much about the sound back in the background. Um, 
That's kind of why I have it this way. I like that they're doing stuff in the background. And I, I got some questions here. I just want to pull them up. And then um, after I ask you a question, I'm probably going to be silent for a couple seconds. That just helps me with my editing. So if there's some awkward pauses, that's why. Yeah, so I, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, that's great. I'm going to ask you the question, wait like a second, and then you can start, start talking. And then the same at the end. I'll, I won't say anything until for a couple seconds. All right, so let's just start off with the first question, kind of a basic question. Um, let me just double check I'm good on everything. Sometimes I get the privilege of having someone else with me and then they get, I can man this and they can sit here. <laughs> I'm just gonna turn this light down just a hair. It's a little too bright for me. I don't wanna regret this in the editing room. <laughs> I'm gonna just turn it like that a little bit more. Perfect, looks great. As long as I don't kick the tripod. We'll start with like a, a basic kind of question is um, just talk to me about the value of the team and life and what it's maybe what it's what it's been. You can kind of tell a little bit about how you heard about it, why you wanted to join um, and just the value that it's brought. That was great. What has being on the team meant? So what's some things that the, the team provides that, and, and some things that you're excited for in the future for the team? So the team is uh, something that he can grow into. He's very young, he's eight. That was great. You're done. Thanks. You did excellent. You weren't nervous even a little bit. <laughs> I have the privilege of being interviewed several times. Do you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Where do you work? Uh, well, I was in the Navy for a long time. Oh, were you? I had opportunity, you know, they, they did some other oh, okay. stuff. So okay. Yeah. I had the opportunity to understand, like, look here, don't look yeah, here, yeah. this. Yeah, yeah. So you kind of know what it's, look up. <laughs> yeah. A lot of people, it's like a whole, it's like a little weird, weird thing to be on camera. But once you get it, you get it. You did great. Thank you. Thank you. Are you next? All right. Have a seat. So on that one, I had the mic a little too high, but it still sounded fine. You're going to look at me. No, no, you're fine. I'm going to sit right there, so you'll be looking at me. Okay. And I'm just going to adjust my stuff. And then, yeah, go ahead and look like right here for me. Okay. okay, and you feel comfortable where you're sitting there? You don't have to move around or anything? No. All right. Perfect, okay. A little too hot. I'm just gonna do, I'm gonna do an audio test real quick. Um, can you tell me uh, what, what you had for breakfast? Okay, that was filling, I'm sure. Yeah, no, it was great. <laughs> there you go. Okay, and then um, tell me, tell me your name, and and who your child is. All right, it sounds good. Everything looks good. Yeah. All right. Just kind of a basic question. What has the what has been the value that the team has brought? I think you know a lot of these boys have known each other for quite a while. They um, many of them have. That was great. You're done. You did fantastic. <laughs> Watch your head. <laughs> you did great. In order to reject a lot of that audio that is, you know, in the background, I should be getting the mic a little lower. I, as I'm sitting there talking to them, I'm like, why is the mic not lower? But I'm also shooting a little bit wide, so I don't want that mic in the frame. But I guess you could always just lower the mic and then crop, crop it out later, but I'd rather not do that. I'd rather not even get the, the mic in the frame, period. But as you can see, I, in the beginning, I asked them to tell me what they had for breakfast. I've, I always do that because that is that um, if you say 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 this, say that, say whatever, they're gonna give you a response back like a parrot instead of if you ask them what they had for breakfast, then they're gonna be able to say um, it, and talk in a normal voice. So I want them to talk normal, just like they're going to in the interview, because that's what we're recording. So I want the audio to be balanced. I'm happy with my lighting. The lighting is getting a nice, um, just a slow, like a nice fade into from from light into shadow, and then light again on the hair light. Hey, how are you? good. How are you, I'm Tracy? I'm great. Do you uh, want to wear your glasses or no? I don't wear glasses. You don't. Oh, yeah, I don't read okay, you can put them on the on the floor beside of you. There you go. That As I was recording this, I happened to notice, and actually I, re I noticed it whenever I was re editing the actual interview video, uh, this shadow right here. So if you see 
be moving the mic. I didn't notice it while I was there. This is a, a mistake I'll never make again, learning moment. So you can see it moving. The shadow right here is moving as I move the mic around. That's coming from above him, there, you know, the ceiling lights in the gym. Um, obviously, I'm not gonna turn those off. A lot of times I actually do just work with the ambient light in the room, but maybe I should have chose a better position where, or, you know, put some sort of a flag over top that, you know, obviously that's more gear to bring along, but, um, or, or I could have just moved them to a different place, but that top down light is, is there. And it didn't turn out to be that big of an issue. Um, I noticed it a little bit more and again, I won't let it happen again, but, um, just something to look out for is if you are dealing with ambient light, um, anything that you put around your talent, maybe, the, maybe there was a light over here somewhere that this, then this light would have cast a shadow on your person. So just be aware of those kind of things. Let me, uh, move that close there. <laughs> Thank you very much. You did great. So you'll, you'll see that I'm asking them their name and all that. That way when I'm editing, I, I know their name. If, if I kind of don't know how to spell their name, I would ask them to spell it for me. But I'm getting them to tell me who their son is. And then I'm probably going to, I have some B-roll of this team already, but I, I might shoot some extra B-roll of them um, to overlay over top of while they are talking. B-roll helps paint your picture. B-roll helps tell, give context to what is being said uh, in, the, in the interview voiceovers or whatever. Now I'm gonna try and get some B-roll of the kids playing and then we're gonna come back and interview some of the kids. I'm gonna turn face detection off. I'm probably just gonna roll manual. The battery's about to die on the A7 III, and I'm about to film some of the kids, which I'm not going to show in the video anyway. So just whenever you're doing interviews and stuff like that, just focus on the story. Um, ask open-ended questions that is going to make them um, speak uh, long about a certain topic. Um, and if they're going too long, maybe have them repeat it again, just shorter. Um, you don't want anyone to sound like a robot while they're talking with memorized lines or anything like that. So um, it's just a process. You're just, just trying to have a conversation with people um, and you'll get the best results out of that interview. And I hope this is beneficial to you in some way. Please leave some comments down below and let's have a discussion about it. Maybe you have some questions, maybe you have some tips on stuff I could have done better. And I appreciate you watching, thank you.